Yes, it has a name, even though I discovered elsewhere that the name had been used before. But anyway, it's called Four Queers, comma, Life's a Riot. Life's a Riot's been used, but um, I wanted, obviously, to say this painting's for queers. For us, mm. life, that two senses of the word, a riot in that it's a lot of fun, and a riot in that often we get the shit beaten out of us by authorities, rednecks, the church, blah, blah. What's the painting about? What does it depict? Okay, I um, conflated the three events of 1978 into one image. Um, I looked at a lot of photographs, all the famous ones on King's Cross Riot with the women being dragged into the divvy bag wagons and um, also in 78, three events happened. There was the march down the Hyde Park People split up, they went up King's Cross, that's when the cops attacked there, the famous riot, the Mardi Gras that time. Second March was where we just marched up Oxford Street to Taylor Square, heard some speeches, went home. The third time was when we marched from a conference of Painted Town Hall down to Taylor Square and <laughs> shock horror, the police waiting for us again and again kicked the shit out of us. Now while I conflated those three events, in that third one I had a video camera and trying to be Mr. Vox Populi, I got in the middle of the damn crowd instead of the edges and I got the camera knocked from my grasp to the ground <laughs> and as I tried to reach down to pick it up and it got kicked around like a football, I got kicked to the ground. So you've got me as a bit of a centerpiece in this painting of being kicked in the head. But as always, I've got several levels to my <laughs> text here, my subtext is that all my life I've been kicked in the head as a gay guy. Um, I grew up in housing and department and from a working class area and just life was just a total bash up at school, at lunch, after school I'd get home, my brother would punch me in the face for being girlish, my father would punch me in the face if I squealed like a girl. I mean it went on and on and on and on, right? So particularly the painting talks about the things that we all wanted as gays, especially by 78. We wanted respect, we wanted equality, and we wanted freedom, mm. but we also wanted the right to be different. And I don't just mean different as a gay man, but even different from other gays, <laughs> if I want to be, you know. Mm. I don't want to be a leather queen, or um, I don't want to be equal to cops either. I want to be different mm. and um, it's a big fight to be different. You've got the rainbow flag in it. There weren't rainbow flags used much in 78, were there? No, and I used it, one, because I love colour and I'm hung up on rainbows, but um, secondly, I was um, being amused and a bit annoyed when they tried to paint the crossing from the police station area across to the hotel at Taylor Square there in Rainbow and um, it got you know wiped out or demolished or whatever the word is cleansed from the street so if you could see the direction of the rainbow flag it virtually matches the same mm. direction that rainbow crossing was going at. again I, I, I like to conflate a lot of imagery together mm. so I even went on the internet and I found a couple of photographs there from Stonewall in New ah. York, 68. And you've recreated the photographs? Yeah, I put those, uh, them in too because I'm suggesting that, we, you know, gays worldwide have the mm. history and a history of rioting and that brings me to what I'd strongly like to emphasise that on the first event, June 24, while all the organisers and crowd had decided they want a Mardi Gras and a party and have it different than the usual <clears throat> down in the mouth protest. I personally, being a very political and rambunctious animal, really did go more as a protest than a Mardi Gras myself. I'm I'm not even into disco music. I'm, I like rock and roll, and I'd much rather a riot than I would have. <laughs> disco dance but I'm just saying you know it's pretty obvious in the documentaries and that show riot that um the crowd was split between those two things half Lance Galling himself like the politics part and wanted to really be strong in the protest and 
a whole lot of others wanted the party. And it's beautiful that the two came together. And also, in all the history of Mardi Gras, those two still are there. We still have protest flows. Of course, we had to fight very strongly for marriage equality. Mm. But there's still other things to protest about. And you've got the reference to equality in the actual painting, which is reminiscent of marriage equality when we saw equality everywhere. Yeah, and it's also my being a political animal. I don't want equality just for as marriage or even as a gay. I want all races to be equal. Mm. I'm the type of person that would like wealth to be distributed equally. I want all sexual genders or what what do we call it? Attitudes or, Mm. you know, trans... <clears throat> LGBT <laughs> Q R S T X Y Z the whole be, alphabet. Yeah, all equal. That's why I've got a curry very much center with mm. the land rights flag because yeah. not only were curries there on the day, but curries are still fighting very hard for their right to exist, for to hang on to children, to get their land rights, to you know get respect, and that's that's as important. I. I I want to be beyond identity politics of only like gay lib. For me, the fight, the the struggle, Mm. the protest is multi-directional. What's it called? It's called intersectionality, I think, right? Yes, it is. Mm. What's the building in the top right hand corner? That's a very famous colonial building going back. You know, here's more um, of my subtext. It goes back to nearly close to Convict era, it's Darlinghurst Police Station. It's infamous, mm. right from Convict days. A lot of deaths have happened there. In fact, I know two people myself who died inside that station. On the night of um, 1978, it, the 53 people were mostly dragged from King's Cross to there. That was the 24th of June, wasn't 24th it? 24th of June, yeah. One particular gay boy as we saw again in that show right was badly bashed in there Peter it's, Murphy yes and it's that station has got a well it's not the state it's a you know, health center now but it had a notorious bad mm. ghost haunted reputation and of course I had to put it featured very strongly there it, everyone knows especially Sydney people they look straight at it they know exactly what the fuck it is mm. how long did it take you to paint Three months. Wow. That about, uh, you know, what do I do? Six hours a day. But it's a lot of sketching first. And what I do is I I sketch and I research. As I said, I look up photos. Rah, rah, rah. But once I try to get the whole sketch together, I'm dissatisfied with the position of figures. So I tend to cut them out and then rearrange them until mm. I'm really happy with, you know, the positions of... And in the end, I still, the beauty of being a painter and not a photographer is I don't have to obey perspective. Um, you know, I can conflate things. Rah, 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 rah. And what's been the reception so far? I got a great reception of it. You I, exhibited it, didn't you? Yes, at um, the 40th anniversary, 78th show in Paddington. And um, I was pleased to note that to use a... 21st century term it went viral it was used on the candles on the cross I mean a lot of my you know this is all because when you network in a city I've got friends and my friends at King's Cross like me and they like my work and they told me they didn't particularly want to use a photograph because photographs have been used so much mm. so they thought it would be nice to have something colourful so they use it. it it got in the 40th anniversary ABC magazine it um Went on TV when two people got interviewed, got put on a blue mm-hmm. screen behind them. Um, I, a girlfriend of mine, being naughty, <laughs> she got herself in the Mardi Gras parade and she printed, um, her and her anarchist friends printed up several hundred of this and handed them out not only to the crowd with a, an anarchist rave going with it, but they handed them to... Um, <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull's VIP section as well. <laughs> that highly amused me. I hope Cher got one. <laughs> I hope so. Anything else you want to add about the painting? Um, You're in it, aren't you? You are the person, I think you mentioned earlier, right at the bottom yeah. on the floor. I think they're blue jeans yeah. and the green T-shirt. Yeah. And your hair's all frizzy. Well, ball with the 
side hair spiked up like I used to wear it back in the day because I, I was really influenced by punk back then. Mm. I hung out in the punk scene in Sydney and hung out with punk bands and most of my friends are musicians. But um, what else would I like to last say about it? You've um, got freedom, equality and respect. Yeah, well respect particularly, you know, that's the one thing growing up gay that you, you got seen as less than and, mm. you know, like you're a piece of shit and okay, society, especially working class, but I saw it, so it wasn't only, but we were made to haunt parks and toilets for, to meet people and have sex. I mean, and they'd have a couple of pubs in Melbourne and Sydney where you could meet your fellows, but mo how can I say this? Suburbia didn't go to gay pubs. Suburbia met in parks. I hate to say toilets, but you know, and um, that's what it was. Well, beats in places. Yeah, and beats. That's it. And because it was fairly well known, therefore, you know, another reason why we were disrespected. We, I've been asked by so many people, oh yeah, but why? Why did you have to go there? Well, you know, of course, heterosexuals grow up with everything going given mm -hmm. to them and homosexuals. I would like to make this as a, my last strong point that especially us from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, the, the, the terror and the ignominy of being gay was, you know, the brutality. You, to, to be threatened constantly with jail, to be threatened with the mental hospital, and shock treatment or whatever, to have your parents and general family disown you. Um, it was difficult to rent a room. It was difficult to hold down a job. I mean, that's why I myself eventually ran off to India in 72, because I both so-called wanted to find myself more and really, I suppose, grow into my <clears throat> gayness. But um. I really wanted to get away from Australia and the suburban convict penal, mm -hmm. well, you know, again, middle class people probably have more padding, you know, more protection. Mm -hmm. If you hear Michael Kirby's story, he, his parents were middle class and he had a really safe, comfortable childhood, even though he admits himself if he'd come out early as a lawyer, he'd never got where he got mm. so he stayed in the closet but I came out at 17 in Melbourne and that was pretty you know god no I saw when you when you I've said it before if you talk gay walk gay think mm. gay you can't you know when they say to you well 300 times a day are you a poof how you can't deny it because you talk gay you know mm. like I it's a terrible thing that <laughs> a lot of gays don't like to admit it I mean just the way it is it's not I don't know even if you pick it up off your fellow gays or if it's in our DNA or whatever I just am different and um, was different and it was a long tough travail but to quote Nietzsche <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger 